15 minutes of more cut content found in Fallout New Vegas. During the quest Run Good Springs Run, Joe Cobb was once planned to ask the player to free the big corners in town so they can cause some chaos prior to the Powder Ganger attack. They would have been locked in a pen that the player would have needed to open. The unfinished AI package for the big corners would have also made them go berserk and attack anyone around, including the Powder Gangers themselves. Prim was meant to be larger, with a whole residential district cut near the water tower, with multiple buildings, roads, and even transmission towers. Prim was also initially meant to have a reputation system, with the player being able to increase fame or infamy with the town. Sadly, it ended up being disabled in the final release. The icon for it can still be found in the game files. When trying to find a sheriff during the quest My Kind of Town, at one point it was planned for the player to ask the citizens of Prim to sign a petition to be annexed by the NCR. The petition reads, We the undersigned do hereby agree for Prim to become full participants in the new California Republic. We accept that we will follow all of the NCR laws and regulations and support them in all wartime efforts. The player would have needed to collect at least five signatures. Johnson now has cut dialogue reacting to it. So you convinced those NCR sons of to take an interest, did you? Well, we need the help. I'll sign. Multiple unused NCR deputies would have also patrolled Prim, instead of just Sergeant McGee. Alternatively, if you decided to make Myers the new sheriff, he would have brought with him other inmates to help police the town. They would be named Powder Ganger deputies. There's an unmarked quest in the Vicky and Vance Casino where you have to track down and return Vance's gun that was stolen by Pauline and Sammy Wins. Once you track them down and find the gun, the quest ends. But it was actually intended for the player to return the gun back to Prim Slim, who still has a couple of unused dialogue lines about it. Those thieves had some gall stealing from a museum dedicated to romanticizing a couple of criminals. I'll make sure the gun ends up back on display. I thank you. Prim thanks you. And I do believe Vance would thank you if he could. After rescuing the Vault Dwellers trapped in Vault 34 during the quest Hard Luck Blues, a couple of days later they will end up in the Aerotech office park, excited to be free and eager to explore the new world they're in. I hope everyone on the surface is like you. But it seems that you would have been able to encounter them again somewhere in the Mojave, with them feeling disgruntled and shocked about the realities of living in this brutal wasteland. Why are you people treating us like this? The surface world is a cruel place. I wish we were back at our vault. Why are the Outlanders killing each other? Why do they treat us like machines? I wish we had remained in the safety and sanity of our vault. There's a cut casino guard that was meant to appear on the strip and based on his dialogue options was designed to confiscate weapons from the courier before they entered in any of the casinos and returned them once they exit. He also shares a resemblance with Mr. Holdout and still has some recorded voice lines found in the Gek. Nice try, wise ass. Now hand everything over before you make a second mistake. Oh now, what a surprise. Someone trying to smuggle in weapons. You just made a big mistake. Two troopers were meant to be sunbathing on top of the NCR embassy's roof, but they ended up being disabled. Captain Marie Pappas has some cut dialogue about it. Some fool troopers think they can lounge around on the rooftops instead of doing their job. If I catch them, they'll have KP duty for a year. During the development of Mr. House's questline, it was once planned for the player to be able to seduce House and access his secret area if they were playing a female courier. There's even a cut virtual reality pod specifically meant for the player to be scanned in and do the virtual you know what with Mr. House. There's also a cut player line that reads, would you like to scan me again? Oh, by all means, yes. A meat mine was cut from the Old World Blues DLC. It's an exact replica of a frag mine with the appearance of a piece of steak. Why the mine ended up being cut is unknown, but an AI package for Gabe, the oversized cyber dog, exists in the files, which would have made him approach any meat mines placed near him, indicating that the mine was created to be an easy way of beating Gabe during the quest of Brain's best friend. There's a cut version of a feral ghoul and a glowing one wearing Robco industry jumpsuits. Irradiated rad roaches were also cut, identical to a normal rad roach, with the exception of a radioactive aura and the ability to heal themselves with a radiation blast. Another radioactive life form was left unused, named Radioactive Tumbleweed. It would have moved around on its own throughout the world and is actually classified as a living creature. 
A cut Sunset Sarsaparilla iBot was meant to appear near the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters and was to greet the player. Welcome to the headquarters of the Sunset Sarsaparilla Company. You appear to require assistance. I'll go find someone. Three versions of floaters were cut from the game. Unique flatworm creatures mutated by the forced evolutionary virus from Fallout 1 and 2. Sadly, they appear in name only, using the centaur's assets as a placeholder. Powder gangers were intended to have female members present in the NCR correctional facility, but for whatever reason, they ended up being left unused and can only be found in the game files. A cut side quest called Jailhouse Rock was once planned to appear in the game, involving four cut NCR troopers. One would have appeared near the NCR embassy, named Les Fratwell. Hi, I'm Fratwell. Fratwell again, brah. Freddy of 30. And the other three, Trooper Willis and his two henchmen, somewhere else in the game world. Yo, I'm Willis. Trooper Willis to you, punk. Henchman number one, yeah. Henchman number two, bro! There's not much known about this quest, other than it's named after a famous Elvis Presley song, also called Jailhouse Rock. Freeside was meant to be inhabited by a lot more squatters, destitute NCR citizens who have lost everything, and are now squatting and fighting with the locals. In the base game, the only place they appear is in the ruined store, during the quest GI Blues, and when first arriving at the strip's north gate entrance. If you interact with them in the ruined store, they only have one voice line. Heard some more people got attacked last night. Heard some more people got attacked last night but they actually have a lot more to say about their situation and free side. Watch yourself if you go into one of them casinos, or you'll be stuck here like the rest of us in no time. Some friends of mine were attacked the other night. Someone should do something. Did you go over by the train station last night? Bless those people. It doesn't matter if they restrict the water. We can get it elsewhere now. Hey, stranger, if you're hungry, there's a man around here somewhere telling people where to get free food and water. One of these days I'll save up enough to get out of here. One of these days. The 188 trading post was also meant to have NCR citizens who have lost all their caps in New Vegas and are trying to return to New California, named Destitute Travelers. The strip ain't nothing but a monster. Chews folks up, sucks out their caps, and spits them back out. I came east to strike it rich, and now I'm broker than ever. What'd I tell my family back home? I lost everything I had at the tops, but if you gave me 500 caps, I'd head straight back. Sick, huh? The Strip's got more gorgeous women than I've ever seen in one place, and most of them's affordable. I won big my first night on the Strip. I kept chasing that feeling, right into the gutter. I sat down at a roulette table with my life savings. An hour later, it was gone. Can you spare some caps, mister? But, of course. It's all right, thank you. On the other hand, cut NPCs just named Travelers were meant to appear there coming from New California on their way to Vegas, hoping to win big and get rich. You hear the losers around here complaining how they lost their shirts on this trip? It's pathetic. I'm sick of the sob stories you hear around here. If you don't know when to stop gambling, that's no one's fault but your own. After I win big, I'm gonna buy my friends dinner at that fancy gourmet restaurant. I saw ads for it back home. I walked all the way from Hub. Thought I'd rest my feet here a day or two, then I head on to the strip fresh. I'll get in, win big, get out. Take those winnings back home where they'll do some good. After finishing the quest Bye Bye Love and helping Carlitos and Joanna escape the Omertas, at some point it was planned for the player to be able to meet them somewhere in the Mojave Wasteland, where they would have settled down and started a new life. Both of them still have voice lines about it. I'm happy to see you again. Carlitos and I have been living here since our escape. We'll never forget what you've done for us. Hey, friend. It's good to see you again. This place doesn't have the glitter of the strip, but I've got Joanna. That's all I'll ever need. Starlet's Hand Wraps is another unique weapon cut from the Dead Money's DLC, a strip of cloth wrapped around the hand, used for protection of the knuckles during combat. When hitting someone, they would have knocked the enemy down and emitted an electric aura, similar to that of a Tesla cannon. Dean Domino's blackmail evidence is a holotape found in his safe, in the backstage of the Tampico, in the Dead Money's DLC, where in it he is blackmailing Vera Keys by threatening to reveal her addiction to chems, but due to how the audio screen scripts were implemented, it never plays in its entirety, and only a single line can be heard. This is the full version. Pretty as a picture. Uh, Dean, I didn't hear you come in. I'm not wearing my dark.
dancing shoes, so I walk a little softly now. What? You think I was a Chinaman? Come to cut your American throat. Dean, really? What? No hug? Come here. Dean, I'm getting ready. You sing like a bird, pop the safe, and we're as through as through can be. Dean, I just... About tonight, I... I don't know. You don't know? I ask one simple favor of you, and you tell me no. I didn't say no. I just said that I don't think... You're right. You don't think. I don't need you. I'll send you back to the farm, worse off than you were, because you'll have seen the Sierra Madre and had to let it all go. I could have gotten any leggy dame out of Hollywood to get out here and play Sinclair's heartstrings. You just happened to be the one I caught, and it was really your own fault, a little too much into the chems and meds and... Oh, shh, don't cry. Look, I'm not trying to hurt you. Just one last little job. A little less dirty. A little less messy. He trusts you, Vera. And so do I. After this, I promise you, all those other horror tapes, they'll go away. Of course, Dean. There are three cut bodyguards that were meant to appear by the north and east gates in Freeside that you would have been able to hire to protect you. All three of them have their own unique voice lines. You're in luck, stranger. You just happen to be talking to the most successful bodyguard in all of Freeside. And I just happen to be available at the moment. 100 caps gets you a peaceful, pleasant trip through our fair district. Guaranteed. New to Freeside, are ya? Trust me, you won't make it ten feet without being accosted by some of our more friendly residents. I happen to have an understanding with most of the local wildlife, however. With me by your side, they'll kindly find someone else to bother. So you want to run with the best or not? Oh, for the lover. Get the hell out of here, then. You could do worse than leave your life in my hands, Wanderer. Far worse. A hundred cap sees you safely through Freeside. What do you say? You can go without one, but you'd be up to your waist in vermin either begging for your caps or demanding it at knife point the whole time. I've got a reputation for shooting first and not really bothering to ask questions later. With me around, the vermin should keep their distance. So what'll it be? I've already spotted two other potential customers while we've been chatting. Hello, my friend. Can I perhaps interest you in some protection? My services come cheap at only a hundred caps. Ah, my friend, believe me when I tell you that this place, while quite nice when you know your way around, can be very, very dangerous. There are those who would hinder your every step with requests for your money, your business, or even your life. With your permission, however, I would be happy to stand between you and those people. How does that sound? Baser has a bunch of cut dialogue about Freeside and the Kings. The player could have asked him questions after dealing with Oris, like, tell me about Freeside. It ain't much to look at, but this dump has something that even the Strip doesn't, and that's absolute freedom. You go other places, and there's always someone screaming at you to act a certain way or to not do certain things. Freeside's not like that. Everyone here is free to do whatever they want. And I, for one, wouldn't want it any other way. What about it? If someone takes your stuff, you're free to take it back. If you can't, maybe you shouldn't have come to Freeside in the first place. We do what we want, just like everybody else. We just have more guys, so other people tend to do what we want, too. If somebody does something we don't like, we let them know about it. If they're strong enough not to care about us liking it, good for them. Well, the Van Graffs for one. We had a slight difference of opinion when they first showed up. Changed our minds pretty quick after a brief demonstration of how much firepower they're packing. We could probably take them, but we'd lose a lot of guys doing it. 